So, like, when they say whiskey and rye, they're basically just saying whiskey and whiskey. Yes. Yes, I believe they are. It's kind of like gin and juice. They were drinking whiskey and whiskey. That's how I'd like to do it. Wait, juice is gin? I'm confused. Gin and juice is a different song. <laughs> mm, that Alabama kid, is it the juice and gin kid? Which Alabama kid? Don't talk. Which Don't Alabama talk to kid? Me. I don't know. Whoever wrote the song about Alabama was also the whiskey. No, never mind. Just please continue. Don't let me talk. She's thinking of an episode of Star Trek. I really am. <laughs> I was thinking Leonard Skinner, but Leonard Skinner isn't the one who That's Sweet sang Home the Alabama. Song. You're thinking of American Pie. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which has absolutely nothing to do with Snoop Dogg, who was smoked under the table by Win- Willie Nelson, just for people to know. To give you an idea where uh, modern culture is, my kids only know Sweet Home Alabama as the song that plays in the background when something incestuous happens. <laughs> <laughs> this is what they've learned from YouTube. <laughs> like, there's a, like someone How many the- children's <laughs> shows have incest in them? <laughs> None of them. It's YouTube. It's <laughs> so it's no longer it's no longer dueling bad. bad no, no, no. Now Sweet, Sweet Home Alabama, Alabama. Is, the, is the cue for music for incest. Like a guy will be in a restaurant and say, hey, everybody, my sister's pregnant. I'm going to be a father. And then like they'll play Sweet Home <laughs> Alabama. <laughs> What's a Kentucky boy say after six? <laughs> Get out my, my back, back Paul. Paul. You're crushing my You're smokes. Crushing my smokes. <laughs> <laughs> How do you give a Kentucky boy a circumcision? Kick his sister in the jaw. <laughs> Sorry. Most of our listeners come from Alabama, so as long as we're making fun of Kentucky, we're fine. <laughs> It's like a drink with death, I guess I'll say it. Someone said it. Someone said it. We got there. And now we have to introduce ourselves. Not all at once. I was gonna do the, like, introduction cheer from Bring It On, and then um, my brain went numb, so I didn't get it. (laughs) They call me Big Red. I don't think... I don't think the guest is supposed to start the introductions, that's just weird. If you're here twice in a row, you're not a guest anymore. Hot damn! I'm an official part! You picked the topic for the show. Did I like, know? beyond guest behavior. Yeah, sort of. You're the leader of the pack. Yeah, bam, sort bam, of, because what, s- <laughs> what I said was sh- show G, which is actually just the paper covered screen thing. And what it was actually called is I didn't think that was the right show. word, but I just I just rolled with it. I was like, yeah. Show G. Whatever is she a- said. I mean, shoji's, I think, means something because it's a tapenyaki restaurant near me. It means something. Yeah, it's actually shoujo, which is also a common name for restaurants and other things, apparently. So, you know, trying to search Shonen for jump. information is... The amount of umi sushis hard. I've been to on the West Coast that are not right? affiliated with each other. This is our Shonen Jump episode, for those of you who are uh, not aware. Oh, hi, I'm Kate McDonald. That's Nick McDonald. And that's Mel. I'm Mel. You didn't refer to me by my full title. I'm not ever doing that. You have a full title? (laughs) Yes, I am now. Nick acts like an alcoholic without actually doing (laughs) the drinking (laughs) leading up to the weird things he does late at night. And by late at night, I mean 8.30, which is very late for him. (laughs) It's late. So I am now, let's see if I was trying to dig these up because I forget them all. I am now Lord Nicholas McDonald. Of England, also uh, Lord of Kerry. No, no, no. Lord of Kerry. That's an Irish province. I'm going to need uh, a bigger cup of vodka today for Nick's <laughs> titles. Are these legit titles? Like, you, did you do that thing where you buy, like, bought a all square of the foot of land? Yes, he bought all of the I, I went, I went on time. Groupon and, and found all of the ones that were available and bought them all at once. So now I'm, like, three times a lord, a czar. And uh, count. I mean, I'm technically a lady, and Killian is a lord from a Christmas present or something a few years ago. That's pretty awesome. I think I own one square inch or a half of a square inch of an acre of some island off the coast of Maine. Is that the the only property I own? Cards Against Humanity Island? It totally is. Yep. (laughs) I really want to be a part owner in that 
Texan property with the trebuchet, because that just sounds badass. Is that a Cards Against Humanity thing? I missed this memo. Yeah, it totally is. Okay. It was several years ago when the border wall was going to go up, and so... Oh, yeah, they, they were buying land on the exactly. border. Exactly. I did not know there was a trebuchet involved. <laughs> Hell yeah, dude! <laughs> Duh. I don't know why anyone buys land without putting a trebuchet on it, to be honest. That's my new home improvement project. I'm surprised we're not putting a trebuchet up right now. <laughs> I mean... So, I guess we should do the... I did that to you. We should probably do our not promos. Does anyone else have a not promo? Is it just me? Is anyone else ever going to join on this, or is it always just going to be me? I didn't know it was an assigned task. It's not an assigned. Because I was not... I was not involved in it last time. I didn't hear it until the episode came out. So I did not know this was a, a repeat thing. Yeah. Well, I didn't say it was going to be a repeat thing, but I think it worked well. I'm going to run with it. So. All right. Today's episode is not brought to you by the Yosemite Death Zone. Hey, we've all been there. You decide to go on a road trip with your young, attractive girlfriend, travel the country, Dude. see its sights, live out of a restored Dude. panel van, <laughs> surviving on nothing but the land and your parents' money. But then it happens. She decides she's an influencer. One morning, you wake up and notice that every moment is punctuated by taking photos of her for the gram or having to do selfies on TikTok and Snapchatting her trying to feed animals, listening to her shrill voice, ceaselessly narrating everything that she did today and everything that she plans to do tomorrow for YouTube. And all you want is to get some sleep, maybe a little gash, but she's up most of the night applying filters <laughs> and editing and picking out the perfect songs for all her stupid little idiotic posts, right? Fucking, we've all been there. And, and yeah, you want to break up with her. There's all sorts of hot hiking girls strange to be had cruising around the national parks in summer. But now this girl knows shit about you. Sh shit, you can't have her posting on your Facebook when you're trying to impress a flexible looking girl with a tongue stud from Carroll College. That's a Catholic school. They'll do dirty shit all night, but they're out of it if any of it ends up on social media. How do you kick this wannabe D'Amelio to the curb and upgrade that VJJ to a girl who thinks sex is sinful and figures, fuck, if you're in for a penny, you might as well be in for a pound. Well, that's what the Yosemite Death Zone is here for. The Yosemite Death Zone is a 50-mile-long spit of land in Idaho where jurisdictional loopholes make it impossible for you to be tried for a federal crime. Yosemite National Park falls under Wyoming's jurisdiction, but if the crime is committed inside the park but across the Idaho border, it's impossible to construct a jury of residents of both the state and the district the crime occurred in, meaning any crime there can't be tried. It's a legal cheat code, like being rich, but it works for everyone. Sure. Maybe it's some 200 miles out of the way and a little bit of a drive, but we all know it's just south around the Tetons, west towards Idaho Falls, then north through Rexburg and up into Caribou National Forest, drive into the dirt road that's only open in summer that leads up to Cave Falls Picnic Area, then hike five miles west, being careful to avoid the Beckler Ranger Station so no one sees you cross the Idaho border in company of someone you aren't coming back into Wyoming with. <laughs> it's common knowledge. It may not be the most convenient location, but isn't your peace of mind worth it? You idiot, a four-hour drive and a two-hour hike, and you could have gotten away with it scot-free, you fucking moron. But instead, you show your face in your hometown like an idiot, asking mommy and daddy for one last bailout as they stick you on a sailboat headed for the Bahamas. Now you have to avoid extradition for the rest of your life, stupid. Hope you learned a lot about camping from that girl before you offed her, because you're going to be sleeping in God-forbidden jungles the rest of your miserable life now, you dumb fuck. The Yosemite Death Zone. Go ahead, Google us. You may end up on a list, but there's fuck all they can do about it. I just love the horror in Katie's face through that entire <laughs> thing. <laughs> she just sank further and further. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not saying it's not a funny joke. <laughs> I'm not saying it's not funny. I got another not promo. Can it top that one? Yes. This show's also not brought to you by pencils. We know nobody's perfect. Here's an eraser. That's it. That's that's Not the problem. <laughs> feel like you should have started. <laughs> I'm hilarious. I just need you two to know that. I feel like there's like two hours of backstory that goes with that. <laughs> I'm just really curious if he murdered that lesbian couple too. Like, how big of a snap did he have? Because he came home and his parents were like, no comment, no comment, no comment, and family, etc. And then one of them was like, we believe he suffered a psychological break and we're supporting him. Yeah, supported his ass to Cuba. I will support you when your psychological break means you start cutting yourself. <laughs> you don't get to murder your girlfriend. Unless you do it in Yellowstone and I don't gotta know about it. And it's like the very bottom corner of Yellowstone. Like, really, you do have to, like, drive all the way around the Tetons to get to it. It's 
way the fuck out there. Oh, I'm aware. I also know things like if you're going to hide a body, you need to plant some endangered species on mm-hmm. top. Or or roadkill also works because roadkill, creates a false uh, positive. Indian artifacts. Well, I guess Indian artifacts means they have to dig. Yeah, probably that. My brain, no brain. Well, Mel decided we should do alcohol ghosts, although apparently she Spirit. She kind of, Spirit? I don't know. Sounds like maybe that wasn't particularly as easy for you as you thought it might be. Hell no, dude! <laughs> I I did speculate that it may have just been the people of Supernatural pulling something out of their bottoms, and it literally seems that that was the case. Yeah, they do that. Now I'm just thinking about Jensen Ackles' book. <laughs> <laughs> well, does someone want to go first? No? Nobody? I thought Theo was going first. What Did kind of ghost is Theo going to tell me about? Ghosts in his butt. Sometimes they fart when he jumps on the couch. <laughs> Does he get scared by it, though? Someone does. A little bit. Just nobody's scared. <laughs> All right. Well, I <laughs> dug into alcohol spirits, and I found a whole bunch of spirits inhabiting scotch distilleries. <laughs> so the first one is a ghost that haunted the Glenroths distillery. And this actually goes kind of outside of the Glenroths himself. It starts with Major James Grant on nearby Glen Grant. He's kind of an interesting character. He had many, many adventures. One of his adventures took him... You what? He had many adventures. The, the end. end. The best story <laughs> ever. So, Podcast yeah, over. See you, we'll see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. Um, it's like a drink with death. Woo! Major James Grant, <laughs> in his <laughs> adventures, rescued two young starving African boys from famine in, Ma- in I gotta say an African word now, Matabele land, and returned with them to Scotland. That sounds like the place that Rick sent Beth when she was Matabele land? Yeah. <laughs> no. Matabele land at this time was subject to drought and famine, which the local leaders had attributed to their arrival, the white men working for the British South Africa Company at the time. Uh, today, it is a region in southwestern Zimbabwe and is currently fighting for independence due to past tribal genocides on its people, perpetuated by the Zimbabweans. Boom. Cheery. You're so cheery today. Awkward silence. <laughs> I'm not looking at the camera, so I'm assuming you both just have looks of total ownage on your face. One of the two boys that was adopted was named Biawa. Everyone locally just nicknamed him Byway because he had an African name and they didn't want to bother. And he ended up serving as Grant's page boy and uh, later his butler long after Grant's death, all the way up to 1972. Is uh, 1970, yeah. Well, I was just thinking, this is his adopted son that became his page boy and his butler. It doesn't say adopted son. It just says that he rescued two young African... He rescued them into indentured yeah. servitude. Oh! Oh, okay, yeah. I Obviously. <laughs> I don't know rescued. what I was thinking. It, back then, if you, if you the wanted time. a butler, you just, you know, went on an expedition to Africa and brought back some starving people. And, you know, it was better than what they were dealing with. So they were on board. It's <laughs> it's not quite the same, right? Right? Just some just some servants who worked at our house and we housed and fed them occasionally. <laughs> now, see, that's the awkward silence. They slept on a pillow in the corner. <laughs> they slept just next to the fireplace. Like a rock star. That's what I was thinking. I'm glad you got that. <laughs> It was seven years after Biawa's death when he was seen again. The nearby Glenroth's distillery had just installed two new stills, and Biawa was seen regularly standing next to them. Every time you say that name, though, I just think of a Bialy babe. You want me to call- I think of By the Should way. I call him Byway like everyone else did? No. So the Glen Ross contacted a uh, university pharmacology professor and amateur paranormal investigator named Cedric Wilson. So he investigated the incident, and apparently what he did is he went out to the graveyard where Biala was buried and sat and had a conversation with him. Eventually, he learned that the two stills had been placed directly along a ley line but they were not in congruence with it, so they were kind of disturbing the ley line. So the Glenroths had these stills kind of repositioned so that they were more aligned with the ley lines, and Biawa never reappeared. To this day, though, the Glenroths still regularly toast to the ghost to keep him remembered and appeased. As you should. Mm -hmm. Next, the Isle of Jura. I 
I'm hoping that's pronounced Jura. I don't know how they, maybe Jura, but I doubt it. It's, it's the, the English Isles, the Scottish Isles. It's probably Jura. In, uh, 1781, Laird Archibald Campbell <laughs> outlawed distilling <laughs> on the island. What was, what was that about? <laughs> Proper Scotsmen don't like to have that name in their mouth because Campbell was the one who sold Scotland to the Brits. Yeah, we're not, Motherfucker. We're not, we're not Campbell fans. No. It was in 1810 that Campbell <laughs> had to <laughs> revoke his declaration uh, when he was woken in the middle of the night to find the ghost of an angry old woman hovering over his bed. Apparently, what she was angry about was the lack of whiskey on the island. <laughs> Yeah, so, and he was so scared that he not only revoked the ban, but also had a distillery built in an old smuggler's cave nearby. (laughs) So, since 1810, this distillery has seen all sorts of ups and downs, closure and revamps, but through it all, they always leave a bottle of 16-year-old whiskey in the cave for the old woman. Does it always have to be 16 year old? That's what it like said. Like they it's, switch it out every year? They said it was 16 year old. Yeah, like so, like they bring a new 16 year old into the cave, you know, which. Well, and then Nick says they bring a new 16 year old in the cave, which has totally different implications. <laughs> <laughs> it's the implication. I mean, we should all be so lucky in our, our afterlife, right? Um, so the headless horseman of Islay was first seen by Lachlan Ban as he returned home one dark stormy me night, and he saw the ghostly silhouette of the headless horseman riding away from his home. When Ban entered his home, he found the fire was out and an open bottle left on the table with a dram drank from it. Terrified, Ban just threw the bottle out because he didn't know what was going on. <laughs> <laughs> So the um, story goes here that eventually the horseman was discovered to be Lachlan's brother, who had brought the bottle as a gift. And he arrived, he found the wind had thrown the door open and blown out the fire, but he couldn't stay very long. So he took a horn off the bottle and left just in time for Lachlan to see him ride off with his hood up over his head. Despite the fact that this tale has kind of been solved, people of Islay still have a tradition of only offering unopened bottles to guests because they don't want to get the uh, attention of the headless horseman. The last one that I have here is Glendronic's Spanish Lady. So the uh, Glendronic Distillery is up in the Highlands, and they're known for sherried whiskeys. But they're also known for having accidentally imported a Spanish ghost. I hate when that happens. Oopsie poopsie. <laughs> so supposedly she arrived in an Oloroso cask that had been delivered from Spain to the Dunnage Warehouse. According to the folks at Glenronic, she was very distraught to have traded the warm Spanish sun for the cold damp of Aberdeenshire. That's one might. So first she kind of worked her way into the connecting tunnels between the warehouse and the main house, but eventually she found her way to the actual house itself. She now occupies a bedroom in Glen House and has been seen or sensed by many visitors, especially late at night. Scotch whiskey ghosts. What are you doing, Durpenheimer? I was telling my story, dick. Uh, the other Durpenheimer. Oh. The most handsome Durpenheimer. <laughs> Boom. I'm done. I can check out the rest of the episode. Yay, Scotch ghosts. Yay, Scotch ghosts. Would you like me Scotch to go Scotch ghosts, coast to coast. Yes. Oh, hold on. Bless you? Whoopsies. That sounded unpleasant. <laughs> that had nothing to do with the Diller. The, the, the Dillra? The, 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 <laughs> <laughs> the Dillard? <laughs> <laughs> Had nothing to do with the dilly, yo. I was trying to say dizzy, but I was also reading my notes where it said distillery. <laughs> <laughs> Had nothing to do with the 17 dilly bars I ate. Uh, all right. So. Oh, I might see it. Hold on. <laughs> Salute. <laughs> Well, I don't know if you heard the thumping down the hall. Like Theo thought I was calling. No, I just <laughs> I just saw your I just saw your head cock like you were trying to prove to Blade Runner that you were a real person. That's what I saw. <laughs> I'm a real boy. All right, all right, all right. So I started perusing drunk ghosts or liquor ghosts or whatever the hell we're talking about, and <laughs> found Star Trek. Found a distillery I like that I'm a big fan of. It's apparently super haunted. So, we're going to Kentucky. We're talking bourbon, as per usual. I got the opportunity to talk about bourbon, and I took it. Way, uh, down, way so, down here on the Chattahoochee? I don't know that that is in Kentucky, is uh, it? Probably not. I think it's Tennessee, but still. But it's something about hoochie-coochie. Hoochie-coochie. 
I, I've decided that any vaginal related commercials should now be the Hoochie Coochie commercials. Fair. Welcome to my Hoochie Coochie. This is insertable birth control. <laughs> I was going to do a not promo making fun of that, but I forgot about it. You really should. <laughs> okay, we're going Going to go back on track here. To the Hoochie Coochie. There's no coochies involved in this story. This is not the Hoochie Coochie monologues? This is serious now? Yes, this is the Hoochie Coochie monologues. It's a spinoff. This was not brought to you by the Vagina monologues. This was brought to you by the Hoochie Coochie monologues, though. <laughs> we also like to call it a prison curse. <laughs> Too far? No, nope. nope, not far enough. <laughs> Who Got are you it. asking? Mel made a funny face. I All wasn't right. sure. <laughs> Mel obviously doesn't use hers to carry things in tight situations. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you don't want to pay for a fifth of gin. I don't know. <laughs> Sometimes you get patted down before you go places. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the rest? <laughs> There was no follow up. It was just shit. (laughs) (laughs) Can I just point out that you guys were frozen for like 10 seconds? Oh, is that why you said shit? That's what you were shelling shit. (laughs) You just yelled (laughs) shit and then you just stood there looking at us. Do something. (laughs) She yelled shit. (laughs) I thought she froze. And and Katie's like, does she have Tourette's or something? What's going on? (laughs) I do from now on. <laughs> Late onset self diagnosed stress. <laughs> she got developed it at age 29. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Shit! <laughs> Fuck! Ass! <laughs> Drink! <laughs> yeah. I've been having major stomach problems, guys. Come on, you can't do this to me. <sighs> Tamp it down with a dilly bar. Okay, I can focus. I can focus. I'm doing it. All right. Buffalo Trace is, uh, I'm a fan of it. They they have a lot of very yummy products, like, you know, just the Buffalo Trace bourbon. They are the makers of Blanton's. It was actually started by the Blanton family. I do believe there's a Blanton's warehouse that crashed in on itself a couple years ago, and it was like $5 million or something of bourbon, which is lost to the wreckage, which no! is one of the saddest things I've heard because Blanton's, we're, we're not talking like top of the line. I feel like most places you're paying about twice as much for Blanton's as you are like Maker's Mark. It's not a cheap whiskey. It's not like Pappy Van Winkle where you have to get on a wait list or join a lottery to get a bottle and then pay $1,500 for it. But She's rambling about I stuff that only exists in her world. In the world of other people that drink bourbon. You know they sell bourbon at Rite Aid, right? Not in Oregon. Nope. Flame. Sucks to be you guys. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> I second that. Buffalo Trace Distillery is the oldest consistently running distillery in the United States, from what I understand. They survived prohibition by becoming medicinal. <laughs> Their staff will use medicinal in quote marks when they talk about how they survive prohibition. <laughs> there was an episode, apparently, I don't know how I missed this, of Ghost Hunters that was filmed there. I believe it was season seven, so like we're talking 2011. Because I actually watched Ghost Hunters. It's not like Ghost Adventures, where I only watch it if they're going somewhere I want to see. They were founded in 1792. They sit on 130 acres at a bend of the Kentucky River just north of Frankfurt. They have distillery tours, but they now offer ghost tours as well. Fun fact, if anyone wants to take me to Kentucky. (laughs) When I told Sean this, we're going to go to Iowa for a wedding next year. And he was like, how far is Kentucky from Iowa? And I'm like, probably further than we want to drive. Like a state. You say it's only a state away, depending on how you (laughs) drive. They don't have speed limits in Iowa, right? They just have cows. Well, there's nothing to hit except cows. They move. (laughs) They move. They move. You know, 70 mile an hour cows dodging traffic, grazing on the asphalt. Focus. I can focus. <laughs> Visitors and staff all report, not all, but multiple members of the visiting groups and the staff report hearing unexplained noises, people talking in the meeting room that was Colonel Albert Blanton's. The Kerbert Albert Blanton? <laughs> Kerbert Blanton. Yes, Kerbert. <laughs> Colonel Blanton, who is the one that uh, stilled the distillery through their medicinal purposes days. <laughs> he died in 1959, the year mom was born, so maybe mom is re- <gasps> My mom, too! 
Mom is a reincarnated Colonel Blanton. It would explain something. If anybody <laughs> is, if anybody's a retired Southern booze distilling Colonel, <laughs> it's our mother. For medicinal purposes. <laughs> medicinal purposes. Okay, don't tell your mom I spat at her name twice. <laughs> I shan't. She okay. probably won't listen. You're probably fine. Oh, yay. Or she'll fight you. Oh, I don't want to have to fight your mom. Our mom doesn't fight fairly. She fights pedally. And behind closed doors. <laughs> but you can ply her with booze, so. Sometimes I am like, why am I so fucking petty? It must be because I'm an Aries. <laughs> no, it's because I'm my mother's child. It's really what it sort of boils Rock down to. She's so, she's so nice. I always forget she's petty. And then, then she gets pissed off and I'm like, well, that's a pity. <laughs> 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 I, I get it now. All right. Anyway, um, there's been lights on the property after hours. Like the security guard once saw lights in the gift shop. He like went to lights, investigate. Not like just you know, street lights. Well, there's a you know, there's a street light that just comes on when no one's there in the gift shop. How would how would there get a street light in a gift shop? It's a street. <laughs> you light. said you just said <laughs> lights on after dark, and that's when people turn lights on. It's like saying shark attacks well, happen on the okay. coast. That's where the people are. <laughs> All right, fair enough. Fair enough. Unexplained lights. We're gonna go with that. How about that? Anyway, he went to investigate, only to find it empty. When ghost hunters did their investigation of the distillery, they identified multiple ghostly presences, including Colonel Blanton. It appears he hangs out in the property. People see a man that looks like him staring through the window. <laughs> I was going to tell this girl's story, and then I realized I don't know who the hell she is. I should probably figure that out before I just say brewer. Because I don't think she was the brewer. Lindsay Brewer. Her name is Hoochie Coochie. Hoochie Coochie Brewer. Her name is Lindsay Brewer, which is a, like an, an appropriate name to work at a distillery-ish. It's not quite on brand, but it's pretty close. So she's one of the tour guides. And she was doing a tour of about 30 people one time. And they were talking about the ghosts. And a voice over her shoulder said, Rye. Which <laughs> is a type of whiskey made in Kentucky, for those of you playing along at home. And she looked around, there was nobody where she's heard the voice from, so she asked everyone, and all 30 of them had heard it as well. No one could claim responsibility for it. Workers also see feet, dang, phantom feet dangling from ceilings can, like they're sitting on the rafters. Can we get pictures? I have not found a picture of that. Phantom feet pics? Phantom feet pics on OnlyPhantoms.com. I had a phantom feet pick in the last episode. I mean, you, he was wearing shoes, but you could see his foot. He didn't charge extra, though. Well, he didn't know that was a market. I mean, it was the 50s. He didn't know he could charge for that. There's also been stories of after a group was moving in a round of whiskey barrels, like employees were moving in a bunch of whiskey barrels. Once they finished, they were about to take a break before a stern voice told them to get out. Ghost hunters, this was 10 years ago. At the point of that investigation, this was the most activity they've ever had on an investigation. Yeah, but this is season seven where they were making a lot of shit up, too. I believe it was Grant got his ass grabbed in one of the one of the basements. So that's I, I bet Grant gets his ass grabbed a lot that he doesn't like to talk about. Well, but he had talked about this one. Okay, well, it fair been, It might have been Jay. It was one of it was Grant or Jay being like, he grabbed my left butt cheek. Someone grabbed my left butt cheek. Like, I'll bet I'll bet Jay would talk about it all the time if it was him. So maybe it was Jay. Didn't mean nothing, but he's just after your smoke. Mm. <laughs> Good talk. <laughs> um, I didn't actually do any research on it, but apparently it's not the only haunted bourbon distillery in Kentucky. Also, the Old Crow Distillery and Old Taylor Distillery, which are now abandoned and essentially like run-down ruins, but they are also haunted. So... If anyone would like to take me to Kentucky, or anyone would like to watch my baby for a week so Sean and I can go to Kentucky, I'm going to drink some bourbon and hunt some ghosts. There's potential there. In that order. Well, I mean, it'll probably be simultaneously, but I'll at least pregame. <laughs> <laughs> the last round of ghost tours I gave, I did pregnant, so I had to do it sober. It was just, it was... <sighs> She didn't see anything. No, I, just, I saw humans, and I didn't want to, like, I saw living beings, and I didn't have that, like, filter up. Oh, uh, copy. <sighs> humans are the worst. Motherfuckers. Ought to be a law. If there was law, it would be against them. Corporeal motherfuckers. <laughs> well, Mel. Ooh, mm-hmm. Ding, ding, ding. We should have done Mel first, because she's the one drinking the most voraciously of us. Could be. Yeah. 
I could go get more drink. I'm out. I could get more. I'm going to go get more. I'm going to finish my sippy cup of vodka. I'm going to get more drink. I drink now. <laughs> Mel, I don't know if you've been warned. A lot of times I just drink a sippy cup of room temperature vodka during this. So there's faces. Okay. It's a little rough. It's a rough breakfast drink. Breakfast of champions. Room temperature vodka. We were doing uh, drink experiments yesterday for, for work for our new drink menu. And uh, which meant we were sampling tequila cocktails before 830 yesterday. Yeah. Tequila makes me mouthy. Jen makes me really, or, well, it hasn't in a few years. Jen used to make me super aggressive. I think we took you to that Irish bar in Bellingham at one point in time. Is that the one where I kept screaming at the guy to play Freebird? I don't remember who you were screaming at to play Freebird. <laughs> <laughs> However, there was a couple of bartenders there that used to just like feed me gin and then point out obnoxious college students and be like, you should get that person to leave. And I'd be like, all right. I'm on it. Mel's turn. Mel's turn. It's my turn. <laughs> Kick the lady. What lady? What? Whose lady am I kicking? I'm not a lady, so it's not me. You said earlier that you were a lady, so. Did I actually say I'm a lady? Yeah. Yeah. Was it real sarcastic? No, it was your nobility. You're a lady in Chile's um, award. Yeah. But you're not a lady. You're not a lady three times over and a Tsarina and a countess. So fucking pick up the speed. God damn. Mel's turn. <laughs> My turn. <laughs> so, a, the whole thing that got this started was the shoujo. A shoujo is a Japanese sea spirit with a red face and red hair and a fondness for alcohol. So a Scottish person. It's a Scottish person that they met on a boat. <laughs> is it, is yes, this the opposite and- of a scar joe? That's my question. Yes. Well, maybe not the op- Sometimes she's a redhead, but her face isn't usually red. And I don't think she's an alcoholic. Well, you never I know. I mean, she's married to Colin Joss. Something's not going on, right? Moving on. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. It, just, just keep it moving. It is important to note that the kanji symbol for a shoujo is the same one used for an orangutan. Um, <laughs> so a shoujo oh. is sometimes referred to as a drunken ape. Now I'm just picturing drunken orangutan ghosts, and I'm even more amused. Good, because that's exactly what this is. So it's also important to note that a ghost distillery is a real thing. So if you Google a ghost in a distillery, you're going to come up with a lot of stuff about ghost distilleries, which is not nearly as cool as it sounds. Oh, okay. I hope like we could distill ghosts from the air or something. So a ghost distillery is a distillery that has shut down, but still has casks of their alcohol sitting around. And okay, then no, that is cool. Here's- that sounds amazing. I'm on board with that. Let's find some of those. <laughs> A single shot from a ghost distillery could cost you 500 to over $1,000. I'm sure. No, not if I break into it. Not if I'm selling them. <laughs> so that make researching this a really, really difficult because if you search for a Japanese ghost in a distillery or distillery ghost, you're just going to get a bunch of information about really expensive shots of Japanese whiskey that have been sitting around for 20 years. Well, the Japanese, like... Japanese whiskey is like the whiskey these days. Like that's the whiskey you want. That's the trendy like kind. You got to drink it before yeah. all all the men drink it all after work. You know what? I've had. I I have no complaints about any of the Japanese whiskey I've had. Yeah, I haven't ever tried it. Yeah. Well, we learned it all from the Scots, so there you go. Slash or bring it tanks. No, because it wasn't slash. It was Axl Rose that looks like the orangutan. Yes. Moving on. Okay. Carry on. Carry on. Carry on. Pushing forward. Car- oh no. Breaching. I'm not going to sing Carry On When We're Son. I'm going to continue talking about the shoujo, so... We, we got into this because of Super Nat. Because of me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, uh, there is a folk tale involving a uh, shoujo, so... A gravely sick man had a dying wish to drink sake, which, by the way, in Japan, sake is just the word for alcohol. It doesn't specifically mean rice wine. The, the rice drink oh. is... Nihonshu, which is completely different. Anyway, I digress. So, is it, is it like um, Nihon the word for rice, or am I conflating? No, Nihon is the is the Japanese word for Japan. I thought it was something else. All right, no, I accept that. I thought I, th- I was okay. thinking it was something else, but yeah, no, I thought Nippon. That's Nihon. What I was thinking. Okay. Yeah. Nick was drinking napalm. It was weird. <laughs> I heard they had a lot of it in Asia, and it 
really blew people away, so I figured I should. <laughs> oh, Boy, I'm dark this episode, aren't I? Gary, like, I told you that. <laughs> <laughs> I said that, like, an hour ago. <laughs> so, gravely sick man, all he wants is, is to drink some sake before he dies. His son searched for it near Mount Fuji and came across the Red Shoujo, who was having a drinking party on the beach. The shoujo gave him some sake after listening to his plea. Since the sake revived his dying father, the son went back to the spirit to get more sake each day for five days. A greedy neighbor also wanted the sake, but he became very sick after drinking it. He forced the son to take him to the shoujo to get the good sake. The shoujo explained that his heart wasn't pure, and so the sacred sake would not have the life-restoring benefits, but instead had poisoned him. Boom! Faced. The neighbor repented, and the shoujo gave him some medicine to cure him. Medicine, a.k.a. more booze. The father and the neighbor went off in the sunset to brew white sake together. And in case you need to know this, shoujo dolls are used to ward against smallpox. What if there's some people I'd like to slip some smallpox to? How do I? And you I, can you can smear it on a blanket and hand it to them. That's the traditional dispersal method. <laughs> Alternatively, a shoujo idol. I mean, I guess that could work. You could smear some small packs on that. And, you know, right? They think really that let it's the irony it away, set in, like but... rain on a wedding day. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, should you ever walk along one of Japan's many coasts and beaches and spot a man-like figure sitting in the sand? Body covered in red, shaggy hair, don't be afraid. It's just your friendly neighborhood shoujo who wants to get drunk with you. I am a... This whole time I've been picturing like a red panda, and you're not making that... You're not taking Orangutan! That yeah. Who is a very oh, friendly and curious sea spirit. And they're a little rapey as a species, but not as rapey as humans. Orangutans or sea spirits? <laughs> Possibly both, I guess. Orangutan. Yeah, For sure. But this is this is the the blending of them. It's their fusion with our powers combined. Is it a smash? <laughs> we are fusion? the rapey orangutan. Smang it. Say smegma. No, smang it. It's smash bang fusion. Look it up. That sounds dangerous. Is that like a Dragon Ball fusion? I know that one. There's a great YouTube video for the song. Don't worry about it. There's a dance. <laughs> All the kids are doing it. Do a little dance. Get a little rapey. Smash bang fusion. Get down tonight. Smash going fusion. Get down tonight. Okay. So I tried looking for like a real life shoujo sighting. And uh, the, the closest that I got was a lady named Nana was staying at a very cheap hotel. She said that her Japanese friends had told her where she stayed used to be an execution ground in the Edo era. A few hundred thousand people were killed there. In the Edo era, wasn't everything an execution ground? Judge. Pretty much. Some people died. <laughs> um, there was a, a Budo statue called a Kubikiri, or a neck cutting, right at the station. There was also an intersection uh, that was called the Bridge of Tears. So she's in this hotel, and it felt really creepy. Well, she's surrounded by all the nicest landmarks, it sounds like. So. Exactly. Go down the bridge of tears. Take a left if they took my home island. And get your neck cut. <laughs> yeah, get your neck cut. All the cool kids are doing it. Progress down Childhood Cancer Avenue. and. <laughs> It's not funny. It's not funny. It's not funny. <laughs> Guys, this episode is rough. <laughs> Ready, go. Feline AIDS. Anyway, so um, she noticed that someone was turning her slippers 90 degrees sideways every time she left the room. Uh, she thought at first that it was the staff doing it, but she always left the slippers facing the door, so she couldn't figure out why they were just turning them 90 degrees. Why not just turn them facing the room? So she asked somebody at the front desk about it, and they said, yeah, it's our ghost, but don't worry. Um, he never hurts anybody, but you can't be annoying. So if you put some sweets and alcohol out beside your door, that usually appeases the ghosts. Make sure you pick something tasty that you would personally like. To stick in your slipper. What do you like <laughs> to eat out of a slipper? Tell me. That gets real weird. The souls of my dead enemies? Waldorf salad. I'd like a slipper full of Waldorf salad. <laughs> Do not mention the war. <laughs> what are we talking about? Faulty Towers. Oh. Faulty Towers. 
Anyway, so trying to be polite, considering this is a, not a person from Japan, she bought a different drink every evening with some melon pan and left it on the side shelf beside the door. And every night that she did that, uh, her shoes were not turned sideways. But one night she accidentally bought some really bad tasting green tea based alcoholic drink and left the can open as an offering. The ghost didn't probably didn't like it either because when she went to take a morning shower, she heard she someone dead. laughing from inside the walls. Yikes. You know, for a place that's right next to the Bridge of Tears, hearing a, <laughs> a laughing entity outside of your shower is probably the most benign thing that could happen to you. It's true, but it's still not comfortable. All their walls are made out of rice paper. It's pretty hard to fit a laughing person inside of them. So. Are they delicious? The rice paper what? walls? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> you just, you know, you just fling some cut up fish at them and, you know, you got sushi or something. This is how I understand Japan. I should understand Japan more because I'm fairly sure that my retirement plan is to, like, buy some land in, like, one of the tiny villages that are running out of people. Because they have all these beautiful mountain villages that are just running out of people because everyone's moving into the big cities. So these gorgeous mountain villages where, like, the land value is rock bottoming because no one wants to buy it. I think I just stole my retirement plan from you. <laughs> well, and the nice thing is, is that being, I guess, third generation, my grandmother would be the first generation. Yeah. Right? Anyway, so being third generation, I can still move there as a long-term resident and not have to jump through a whole bunch of hoops in order to live there. I I may have researched this a little bit during the um, the past four years. That's weird. That's for weird. no That's particular the time you reason. Did. Yeah. No yeah. Particular reason. <laughs> for no particular reason. I didn't desperately want to um emigrate away. You know, just <laughs> just in case we ended up back in concentration camps for no particular reason. <laughs> That's fair. I did find out that as, you know, if you can prove German blood then you can claim German citizenship, but they do not offer dual citizenship, so it's German or nothing. I can totally prove German heritage, too. I am a giant conglomeration of Axis powers, so awesome. I have a couple of different places I can flee to in the night, in case. You're in good, you're in good company, like Mercedes-Benz. Yeah. Yeah. Awkward silence. Someone funny, go. Poop! Cheese! Poop cheese. Poop cheese. I'm sorry, did Poop you finish cheese. your story, or did we just bulldoze it? I'm, I'm done. Okay. Um, so maybe that- both. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so we're supposed to talk about spirit spirits now again, but spirit, different. What? What? A drink. That's code for a drink. Yeah, that's that's what I thought we were leading up to. Drink and drink. You, you decided to explain it in a fight. way that made no sense to me. And if I see a pretty girl, I'll sleep with her tonight. And we'll drink, 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 drink. Fight. So I knew Nick's story involved. Scotch and that your story involved sake and um I didn't want to try to make a scotch cocktail I mean like I can but that just just sounded really rough I know scotch cocktails exist like penicillins are popular but I just not gonna do it so bourbon just do like a (laughs) shot of just do a shot of each be like three wise men from Letterkenny oh yeah I mean actually I do like rice wine but usually if I drink it it's Usually means Hillary and I are having sushi, and it usually means we drink out the entire restaurant's stock of Snow Maiden. That's neither here nor there. Just dropping hints for Christmas. Mm, it's unfiltered. I probably shouldn't drink it. Anywho, I'm going with <laughs> bourbon, and I am uh, entertaining myself today with little little to doery to doery. That's going to be a word now. I'm going to be president. Little to do re with our stories, but we're going to use, I haven't decided if I'm going to use Buffalo Trace or Blanton's. I didn't realize that's how you were using that word. I thought it was just like a big to-do. There was much to do re I didn't realize that you were using it as a verb. <laughs> Grab it by the hoochie coochie. to do re When you're famous, they let you. I have to go. <laughs> that's the same face you made with the Yosemite story. <laughs> <laughs> Domestic violence, sexual assault. There's just, you know... <laughs> Fleeing to Japan. <laughs> there's, just, there's just some lines that even I have a hard time crossing it <laughs> publicly uh, with witnesses. It's rough. Anywho, I've decided to entertain myself with this beverage. 
since we are at the end of the summer produce, I'm taking probably Buffalo Trace because I just don't think I want to put this much stuff in Blanton's. And then I have to drink the rest of the bottle of Blanton's straight, which I'll probably do in like two settings, which my stomach cannot handle right now. So Buffalo Trace whiskey bourbon. We're going to... All those dilly bars. I'm going to muddle it with some mint. With a dilly bar. <laughs> with a dilly bar and some hot dog water. I'm getting hot dog water and some water. <laughs> You see the thing about how hot dog water is the opposite of holy water, because if you add a drop of holy water to anything, it makes it pure. If you drop a, <laughs> add a drop of hot dog water to anything, it contaminates it. <laughs> so when I do uh, house cleansings for people, should have <laughs> holy water in one vial and hot dog water in another, just in case shit gets weird. Yeah. Now I just want to bring hot dog water to the church and be like, Doop. I just contaminated your whole little fountain. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Okay. No hot dog water. There's no hot dog water. <laughs> just drink. Okay. Buffalo Trace whiskey. I'm going to muddle blackberries and mint in it. I'm going... To put some dark tea in it, I think I'm going to make a, like, dark black tea syrup, because this girl loves a simple syrup. And then I'm going to tap it with some soda water, because I like bubbles. Tap I might that put some, ass. I, I might put a wee bit of lemon in it, because I like citrus. We'll see. We'll see if that pans out. Oh, damn. And we're going to call it Hot Dog Beach Orangutan Fun Party Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> So I left a bo- a, a pan of um, hot dog water on my stove overnight, and it caught, like, five fruit flies. So now, like, to me, hot dog water and fruit flies just are together now. So you'll be able to know which so you know which is exactly. the hot dog water, because it has dead exactly. flies in it. Mm-hmm. Am I back now? Ish. Yeah. Sort of. No. Yeah. Am I back? Yeah. Ish. Okay. So did I miss the drink about the rocket powered monkey car or whatever it is? Because I could I could hear bits I mean, and pieces might... as they went. Well, my name was real creative, so we probably should get a more realistic name for it. Do you remember what the name was? Just curious. I don't remember what the name is when I actually name a drink. <laughs> We're gonna have to play this back, try to recreate it. It was something about a beach orangutan party. Yeah, I heard something about that. There was a couple I could, more I words. could catch, like, bits and pieces of what you were saying. We could just call it the party monkey, I guess. I don't know what that has to do with bourbon. That could be a fit. It just sounded like that time that Jimmy <laughs> James translated his biography into Japanese and then back into English. I mean, that's how Lewis Carroll got his name. Not Japanese. Dun dun dun. Yeah. You don't want to explain that? You're just going to say some shit like that and, like, let it sit there? Like, what's going on here? Oh, so Lewis Carroll, I don't remember what his actual given name was. I could probably look that up. But when he was picking his nom de plume, he trans- he translated his name, I believe, into Latin, translated it back, and then flip-flopped, flip-flopped the first and last mm. name. There was a so paper his- I wrote on. See, I remember shit like this, but I can't remember what I called a drink five minutes ago. So his original name was Carl Lewis. Probably. Is what Hold on. I'm Googling. Oh, God. Consulting the Oracle. Again. <laughs> Charles Ludwig Dodgson. Yeah, that was a, that was a good change. That so was maybe, an improvement. Well, Charles Dodgson, I guess, was probably fine. <laughs> Is it? Because it sounds like he should be raising a NASCAR. I was going time period, not current. Period appropriate. Like not wearing white pants. <laughs> I'm glad you went there because I wasn't fast enough. (laughs) Always here to help. (laughs) Or something. So, I missed it, but I guess you guys had a drink discussion. I missed part of that. Dark tea syrup. Whiskey. Mint. Blueberries. Soda water. Put off. This is very concise. Sounds delicious. Like you're just stealing it from somewhere else. I mean, I might be evolving a drink I've made before. Okay, fair enough. That's fair. I'll accept that. Which was a sweet tea vodka drink. Okay. Sweet tea vodka drink, sweet tea whiskey drink, sweet tea lager drink, sweet tea cider cider drink. Cider drink. (laughs) You know what they say about those pedophiles? They love sweet tea. I forget who it is. Someone had a bit about, like, on those To Catch a Predator shows. Like, they're always, why don't you sit down and have some sweet tea? They're like, oh, fuck, sweet tea, hell yeah. (laughs) I'm gonna jail for a million years. I don't care. (laughs) 
Little boy, did you come all the way here just for my sweet tea? <laughs> that sounds dirty. It was vaguely meant to, but I felt dirty saying it. All right. Shall we end the show, folks? We probably should. We're far beyond. I'm in my no baby time. I got shit to do. No baby time. It's the only time I can I get do that. Shit. I understand it. I don't. I'll send you my baby. Then you'll understand it. <laughs> because he is feral. Feral, feral, feral. He's real sweet, though. Like Perry Farrell. We can't finish the show until we come up with a theme for the next episode. Um, no offense to Mel, but we Not were period some, pants. Okay. Period we were pants. putting some feelers out there for more guests. I don't know if that's I have a Sasquatch hunting guest we can have, but probably not I don't know if we'll be for the next episode. She's on a crew. Oh, okay. Well, that's fair. Right. Well, and then the episode after the next one, we've got to figure out what we're doing for Halloween, because that'll be the Halloween show after this next one. Bum bum bum. You were gonna go ghost. You you talked about something I want to do. Well, I know, that I can't but do I don't it. know who I could get to go do it with me is the problem. <laughs> I don't have ghost hunting friends, possibly because I'm not really a ghost hunter. But... And you live a billion miles away. I mean, I could go ghost hunting. We could all go, go well, all do individual ghost hunts at the same time, comparing notes. <laughs> I got a spirit box. That's why she can't wear white pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's a cave of wonders, not a spirit. <laughs> <laughs> There's been some things that don't have spirit in there. Unspirited folks. Hollow husks of a human being. But next episode... <laughs> who's got a ghost we want to talk about? Talk about movie ghosts. Movie ghosts? I don't know. Is it, is movie ghosts doable, or is like everyone just going to do... do movie ghosts. Everyone's just going to do three men and a baby. Poltergeist? Oh. I was thinking the poltergeist curse. That, that's a good one. Movie ghosts. Movie ghosts. We'll do movie ghosts. Who would like? They did an episode of that on Supernatural. So Mel's got a story. Oh uh, well, I mean, it may be something that the supernatural people just pulled out of their bottoms, but Jensen Ackles. <laughs> Jensen Ackles. Bottom. Mm, Bow legged. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm worried about her Tourette's now. <laughs> All right, next episode we're doing movie ghosts. Um, be sure to check out our show notes. Do we have anything from this episode to put in our show notes other than the drink? God, maybe just an apology, like in general. <laughs> <laughs> I could probably send you a link to a smiling orangutan picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. A drunken orangutan. I've got like a gig of those on my hard drive. That's no big thing. Well, good, then um, I don't have to do shit. Uh, be sure to check out the show on Apple, Google, Spotify, if you hate what you're currently listening to it on. Uh, be sure to check out our website. That's where our recipes go up. That's where you can find all episodes. Uh, you can find write-ups on some of our stories. If you like to support our show, God bless you. I don't know what's wrong with you, but we love you all the same. You can support us through Patreon. You can support us through Anchor. You can support us through the Tee Public Store, where we've got merch. You can buy shirts with our nonsense written on them. How's that sound for a Halloween We're gift? due for some new nonsense, I think. I know. Well, I've been busy. I would really like a plushy corpse drinking friend. Like a six foot tall one that you can get in the carpool lane with? Or like a... <laughs> um, yeah, I do need to do some more t-shirt designs. But I've only got so many hours and now I'm back to work and it takes up like 20 hours of my week. It's bullshit. We'll pray for you. You guys don't sound sympathetic. Um, I should be sympathetic. Thoughts and prayers. I don't know what you want from me. <laughs> Thoughts and prayers. Be sure to check us out on our socials. <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, I guess Facebook. That's all we do, right? We're doing something else out there that I need to be working on. Only Phantoms. Only Phantoms. <laughs> Onlyphantoms.com. Maybe. I'm, I'm seriously considering trying self-distribution on t-shirts after the uh, new year. I mean, it gives me a reason to buy... Things I don't need. So, man. Cool. Dopamine. If I buy it, I might get the dopamine for a second. Woo! It's good, especially when you buy mail order, because then the dopamine lasts until the package arrives. Or it goes off, but then the package shows up, and I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> now, once I get the package and open it, it's gone. That's, that's when it runs out for me. No, but if I forget I bought it, and the oh, time it takes for I the package see. to get to me, I get another surge. Uh, if I, forget I, if I forget I buy it, then, like, Kel goes, what the hell is this? And they go, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> At least if I know what it is, I can say, oh, it's uh, your anniversary present. <laughs> She doesn't know. <laughs> she doesn't see me open it. Sean, uh, Sean had to point out my stack of six packages yesterday. I'm like, oh. 
<laughs> do you people not get the buyer's remorse? What's remorse? Oh. Is that like when you do Morse code twice? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, anything else? Anything I've forgotten? Anything I else like to talk sandwiches. about? Kate likes sandwiches? I like sandwiches. I'm trying to convince myself I don't need to go across the street and get a double snacker from Burger King. Get the cheeseburger sandwiches? Shit, yeah. Hamburger! Hamburger! Hungry. It's like a drink with gas. So, <laughs> so please drink responsibly <laughs> and in accordance with your local laws. <laughs> it's like a drink with death. Wrong Don't tag know where line. Goes. <laughs> that one. God that's, damn it. That's how we get the fuck out of here. <laughs> the magic password has been spoken. We may now leave the podcast. <laughs> Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>